Zoya has problems which are common to all uh, millers, all garment factories. Uh, and as we are speaking, uh, <coughs> Zoya is operational, it is milling, uh, it's generating sugar, which is being put on the market. Uh, the only problem we have is that it is not at the level, at the maximum level that we expect. Uh, but uh, as I've told you, uh, these are uh, problems affecting all public millers. In fact, uh, last week, when MD, I was in Nairobi with the MD. We were actually meeting the officials from Mens of Agriculture and we shared with them uh, some of those problems. Uh, the problem now facing the sugar industry, for example, like in Zoya, is that we have uh, equipment, very old equipment, okay? The factory is old. Uh, having been put there, I presume majority of you, maybe only the MOD and myself were born in 1976-77. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know the technology of those days cannot be as efficient as it's supposed to be. Uh, because of that you have regular breakages, uh, spare parts, then it puts ourselves and by extension the government under pressure uh, to do regular maintenance, and maintenance means money. Yeah? Uh, so that is that is uh, something that uh, we have. It is something that we are working on. We are hoping that uh, we are going to have uh, a solution uh, as quickly as possible a solution which means that uh, we are going to, we are hoping that uh, the government is going to install uh, a new machine, new equipment which will make the issue of crushing sugar cane as efficient as possible. Um, to change the existing plant and uh, install a new, a new one. Uh, then, of course, in the process, we have had things which are manageable. For example, we have the problem of uh, ma machinery, eh? tractors and all other related machinery, again, which are old. And you know, when anything, anything which is old tends to be, uh, to be inefficient. So we are also hoping uh, that we are going to change, upgrade the machinery and the rest of it all, so that we were in line with the modern, you know, machinery. Machinery here we are talking about tractors, trailers, okay? Uh, yes. Then you say eh? raw materials are a challenge. Uh, for the simple reason that uh, we have so many millers. When we started, basically we had only two millers around, with Mumias and Zoya, and there was an element of zoning. How far Mumias could go and uh, how far Zoya could. Now, uh, we have West Kenya, we have Kabarasi, and up there we have Naitiri in Tongaren. And they, they are all looking at the same cane supply, eh? the same cane supply. So uh, that, this element of sharing cane has naturally depleted the cane available for milling. But besides that, uh, they are very aggressive and they, they use an eth ethical methods. For example, they poach, they, they, they introduced poaching. 
while while we have our cane, some of it uh, owned by farmers who are supported by Zoya, okay? But they will go at night and harvest the cane. Uh, sometimes they will uh, use, eh, induce farmers by offering to pay more, and yet we have the problem here. Our rates are fixed by the government. We cannot increase uh, our rates by even one shilling. In fact, uh, we are uh, at Zoya, we are really stressed because last week, uh, these uh, private millers uh, went ahead and increased the price of cane per, per ton. MD, they increased it to? They were different, but uh, 5,000. Eh? Amount that we should pay per, per, per ton. And you know, for us, uh, as much as we wanted to do the same, but uh, we are tied. Eh? The owners. You know, I should have started by telling you that Zoya is owned by the government, 98%. Eh? Yeah, it is a state corporation, 100% more or less. Yes. So we have to wait. We have now to lobby and persuade the government, please, eh, can you also increase the rate? Then when it increases the rate, we become competitive. But now the big challenge we have is that these private millers are able to, to persuade the suppliers, the cane suppliers, and uh, we're having that, that problem. Mm. Belongs to the government and by extension to the people. It was, give, it was started as a factory to serve the community, okay? Uh, to provide employment uh, and other services, which it has been doing. Now, we're educating people. The education is, this is your factory. This is your baby, okay? Uh, and we don't want this unfair competition to take us, say, to the level of what happened to Pan Paper? I was uh, in Parliament when Pan Paper was having its problems. We tried to inject money into it, but uh, Pan Paper had the same problems: uh, technology, which was uh, outdated, then supply of raw materials. Pan Paper used to get raw materials, wood from as far as Timbarua, but you know. It was not being replenished. And uh, when it went under, basically, all the people neighboring Weboye, uh, they, they have since had hardship. So people must understand that it is very important for us to sustain. It's important for them to supply raw materials, especially to Zoya, because it is theirs by extension. You know what belongs to the government belongs to the people. Yeah? So it is theirs. Uh, the other thing we have also noticed has to do with the, is the same, same old problem. You know, when, when I was reading the Bible, Jesus was telling people, don't use different scales, eh? false scales. You know, weighing, weighing scales. These private millers use scales which have been tampered with. So where you find Zoya uh, coming up and saying, okay, your cane is 12 or 13 or 15 tons. To a private miller, eh, the cane will be found to be between 8 and 10. I'm speaking from experience because I'm a cane miller and I've been supplying uh, cane. Okay, they play around with, with the weights, with the, with the scales. Now, what happens here is that they make, obviously they make profit. Then that is the profit now they use eh, to, to pay farmers 
and they, they, they wake up and say, okay, you, you can see, now I'm paying you a little bit more than Zoya. Lakini mutu wa meibiwa kwa kipimo. You see that? Yes. So those are unfair practices we are teaching our people. A, an education program that please be patient with us. We are doing the right thing. Hatuta kuipia. Pengine tutachelewa kidogo kulipa. Lakini hatuta kuipia. At the end of the day, you are going to get much more higher returns from us as compared to the so-called private millers. Let me make a general statement. MD maybe can go into details. Yes, I've had those allegations. I've had allegations, and I'm using the word allegations, strictly speaking, that uh, some of the staff have apportioned themselves, eh? apportioned themselves some land within the nucleus, eh? they harvest. In fact, it was than that, that, uh, that uh, they wait for the company to cultivate and then they go and harvest. <coughs> there are nucleus, I mean, there are, uh, there are allegations because uh, the one man that have been here, there have been no proof. Um, when we talk about proof, is that someone will come and say, look, uh, uh, MD has apportioned himself maybe 100 acres in the nucleus, and uh, eh, this is where it is. We have not had any of those. So they just remain allegations. And here, <coughs> Here, they have had so many things. Upper Nepali are Vitina Mingi Sana. So, I've, as a chairman, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as a chairman, I have to be very careful. <coughs> Looks like someone does not want me to talk about this. <coughs> as a chairman, <coughs> to be ascertained, and uh, in event it is ascertained, we know the names, we know the areas, we know uh, maybe the years they did the harvest, then uh, we will take action. In fact, it is criminal. It is theft, hmm? theft by servant. So we will uh, take appropriate action. But so far, there are just allegations I was hearing even before uh, I came to Zoya. Okay, I presume, MD? On that, uh, the issue of privatization has been with us much longer than what people uh, know. I remember 20, more than 20 years ago, I was a public officer working for the government, and uh, there was a question of privatization. The reason was then that most of these state corporations, and to a certain extent I agree, were not as efficient. They were not being run as efficiently eh, as they were envisaged when they were being created. For example, if Zoya is being run efficiently, it should be making a return. At the end of the year, instead of going to government for bailout, okay, so I should be calling someone in treasury and saying, this is our books. This year we made profit of, let's say, one billion. So we are surrendering to the Republic of Kenya one billion. Okay, when I say Zoya, I'm saying there are so many other, other organizations that are not making profits. Maybe, maybe, maybe two, three only that are making profit. Even companies which are uh, monopolistic okay companies which are making which are monopolistic like Kenya Power uh, they're still making losses and uh, it is a concern it's a big concern even where I sit it's a very big concern if we are crushing Ken why should we be is crushing and selling Ken why should we be waiting for a bailout which happens everywhere 
or most of this, as I've said, maybe about three, four only. Yeah? Other, other, others, Kenya Airways, I don't know who and so on. And um, from uh, the government's point of view, uh, they become a burden. Okay? Ni kama wewe huko na duka, you stock, vitu kwa duka, unauza, ama unapatia, like say, sisi wanaume, unapatia mama, bibi. Eh, nimekufungulia duka, uza. <laughs> then haki uza. <laughs> Bado nakuja, nasema mze, hiyo vitu unapatia kuuza, nimesha uza, nimemaliza, nipatia pesa tena ni ingizi zingine. Let us restock. You know, you are supposed to restock. Eh? from the money made from the sales, which is not the case. And uh, being honest is that these government entities are mismanaged, they are abused, and so on. It's right. Why should you start uh, an entity and instead of the entity bringing money to you, you are permanently uh, pumping money in. These are the questions the MD and myself, we were appearing before the Public Investment Committee, huh? members of parliament, and they were asking us these questions. Like we have just come from Nairobi. We were being asked <coughs> questions about, uh, because uh, this money which we expect the government to give us is money the government has raised from other sources. And I think that is the reason why uh, the economy of the country is affected. So the matter of privatization is historic. It should be around 20 years or so. The companies which have to be privatized was even decided a eh, long time ago. I, I know that because uh, I know two gentlemen uh, who are who are chairman of, uh, who are chairman with uh, a professor, I think a professor Katimu, who happened to have been my lecturer at university. And we met him as members of the parliament. We met him in uh, Kisumo almost 14 years ago. And we were talking about uh, privatization. Uh, my friend, the current governor of uh, Busia, so Peter Ojamong, was the last, I'm sure, I don't think he has been replaced, was the last chairman of, of uh, privatization of Kenya. Hey, Paul. 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 Yeah, Paul, Paul Otwoma. <laughs> he was the last chairman of that. So it is something, a subject which has been with us, it has been with the government. Uh, and uh, in any case, the chairman, the, 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 the government has the right to conduct its business the way it wants. Okay? And that is why it has, uh, it has uh, I, I was reading that uh, the cabinet decided that we, they are going to take forward this issue of privatization. Uh, but you know, you must also consider other elements of companies of this nature. Because companies of this nature are uh, established by government not only for profit making. You know, you, you, you want to bring a company like Zoya, put it here, uh, hoping that it will provide employment eh? the way we do, both permanent, uh, contractual, and cash employees. We, we employ up to we employ up to almost 4,000, okay? And, and it is very helpful. Apart from that employment, there is also the other social part of it, socioeconomic part of it. You can see outside here, kuna maduka mengi sana. So when the company is, 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 is here, uh, whether it makes profit or not, eh? Mamamboka, that is a very common one to these days. Eh? Mamamboka, watapata kitu, eh, ata wale wachanga, eh, and so on and so on. There are all those other social part of it. 
Now the question is, if you privatize, what happens? There's no guarantee that uh, someone who has bought Zoya will say, okay, let us continue with the pattern. We can improve on it, but let us continue. Eh, the first thing they, they will think about is rationalization in terms of employment. Eh, if we have a, a workforce of, of let's say, uh, 4,000, and the majority of them, nearly 60% uh, do wedding eh, and the rest, they can come and say, instead of doing that, instead of employing widows, eh, let us uh, use technology with spray. That denies those people, you know, jobs. So are there, people are uh, uh, talking, here in Bungoma, being one of the people, local leaders, people say there is the, the factory, when you talk about factory, you're not talking about chuma, chuma, chuma yet we, you're talking the most critical part of it, the starting point. Before the factory was there, there was land which was surrendered by the indigenous people. What happens to that land? Because it is like you're transferring land, eh? of the indigenous into the hands, eh, pengine ya waindi, ama warabu, mm, ama watu kama hawa. Eh? So why should you give? I, I know that for certain because uh, my clan, you know here a lot of us talk about clans. Eh? My clan used to be up here a place called Chalicha. Okay, church. Chalicha school, Chalicha what, all those things were surrendered to. Now, the people who used to stay here, uh, the residents of Chalicha can be found in Transoya, where they were translocated. You see that? So those are some of the concerns, considerations. Uh, from where I sit, and having participated in the making of the Kenyan constitution, I know the cabinet passing the decision is not the end of it. We, it must also come back. I don't know whether that has been done, but the Constitution requires that for every decision which is made, which can impact, which has a socioeconomic impact on the people, there must be public participation. Yeah? So we are hoping that uh, uh, there will be public participation and uh, uh, the locals uh, will be able to, to to give their views. But as people charged with the responsibility, we have a duty to make it work as efficiently as possible. You see, if someone comes in, they will look at the books. Okay, I want to buy Zoya. Can I look at the books? Okay? Can I look at the accounts? Has it been making profit? What profit? Because they're not just going to buy or invest in a loss-making organization. Eh? What, 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 what do I expect? What return do I expect eh? from, from my investment? So they will look at it. So those of us, MD, myself, and others who are here, we can help the government make more money by cleaning our books by making Zoya as efficient as possible. And that more or less defines my mission as a chairman here. Mm -hmm. yeah.